to talk about the fold scope? Maybe not. Okay. Um, so let me just briefly, if you have questions about the fold scope, I think she shared a video. If she didn't share a video, I will make sure that I do share the video of how to build the fold scope. It's pretty easy. And she's going to have somebody come in and do the conversation. Let me unpin you, honey. So you're not all standing up there all by yourself. Let's see, where are you? It's always hard finding the pin spot down here. Um, so she, uh, I think that they're, for the most part, the presenters in that one are also gonna be leading. You'll go into the breakout room to actually build the fold scopes and go through that whole process of building the fold scopes. But. So for those people who also ask the question about, well, I'm gonna be doing multiple camps, the same thing will apply there. We do have extra fold scopes that I can ship out fairly easily to um, those of you who think you want to have at least two sets of it. I can stick that in the mail because I can put them, you know, I can mail them USPS pretty easy, but they are not easy to reverse. So once you build them, you can't easily take them apart and do it all over again. Similar to the spectroscope, which is gonna have some glue involved. So you are not gonna to wanna to take them apart and try and do it again. Okay, let us, um, I'm gonna to switch to math just because I wanna get Sonia connected here and then we'll go back to the end. Well, then we'll do Megan. And I am not sure if Amy is on. Amy Anderson, maybe. Maybe not. Okay. So let's, um, Somia, where are you at? Say something so I can find you. Hey, Mary. And keep talking. Oh, there you are. I see you now. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. cool. Can you hear me? I can hear you. And you're pinned. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so um, you you guys should have seen uh, um, the training materials on Google Drive under a folder called Secret of Rubik's Cube. Uh, it has the instructions to how to uh, um, you know read the positions or how to um, um, what each position position stands for, and that's something that you have to familiarize yourself uh, with. Um, each uh, face of the Rubik's cube um, is going to be oriented with each step we'll use. So by in this exercise, the, what we are trying to teach these students is that, um, you know, we use algorithms in every day-to-day -day activity. And Rubik's cube is one of the most fun activities where algorithms are successfully used. So another thing that I have uh, shared there is um, a video, instruction video. It's about a little more than an hour long. Um, by um, uh, made by uh, our uh, friend in uh, Sweet Central Illinois, Kade Diayo. And uh, she is going to be a part of the workshop as well. And uh, hopefully seven of seven others from my section will also be there. Um, all of us are engineers with, uh, from, uh, with different backgrounds. Um, and uh, uh, so, uh, and many of them, many of us have done this with other students, middle school students uh, in the area. So, uh, and I have Laura here, who's uh, uh, he, who is a section leader uh, from Sweet Central Illinois, Laura Ruiz Santa Maria. And she is, uh, um, you know, she is, uh, she can speak Spanish as well. So if um, help is needed where, you know, the students uh, have to, um, you know, work out some of the details and uh, uh, Spanish, she can help there. Uh, and we are working on getting some of the instructions written up in Spanish as well. So it would be uh, helpful to everybody. We have a, our president is a Portuguese speaker. I don't think there'll be Portuguese speakers in the audience. So that should not be an issue. Um, but yeah, it's, remember, um, Laura can uh, attest to this, but uh, Folks uh, don't have to complete solving the Rubik's puzzle, uh, Rubik's cube. Um, you make it daisy. You start off with all the positions that are uh, written up in the handout. And uh, if you don't solve it, it's okay. Uh, one of the lessons in engineering is you have to practice and you have to try. That's something that they'll take away, and it's a life lesson, right? So, uh, and uh, this is one of the uh, reasonably. Um, 
good algorithms we have chosen and it's a, a pretty standard algorithm as well uh, so some of the students may also be very fast and they may end up doing uh, it like in like 15 or 20 minutes then if that's the case then we can talk about algorithms to them so the structure that we are looking at is like the first 10 minutes we'll have an introduction and then breakout room breakout room um, and then we uh, come together in the last 10 minutes um, to um, kind of talk about lessons learned or if anybody wants to add to uh, uh, you know some of the algorithms that coaches spoke about or what not uh, we can uh, uh talk about that laura did you want to uh, add something on anything that you learned from uh, this is my first time doing this workshop uh, but laura was a part of a different workshop uh, for middle school students where they saw rubik uh, rubik's cube no i think that you uh went over it very well uh just something to highlight just as you mentioned um it is a challenging activity so not all of the kids will finish uh However, I think that from what we experienced, uh, despite that being the case, um, I would say that uh, the kids really enjoyed the workshop and we had a couple sessions. They, they came back to the second session as well, um, happy to participate. And as you mentioned, there, was, there are some takeaways. Um, and, you know, it, it tells you that if you... If you keep practicing, eventually you'll get there. So, yeah, fake it till you make it, right? Because yes. You just move your hands really fast on the Rubik's cube until you <laughs> make people think you're doing it, and then you grab the other one and show. See? <laughs> right, right. That's that's what that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to have uh, one that's ready and one that's. <laughs> there you go. That's the magic. That's the magic. <laughs> there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not start, begun. I've not begun doing anything with it yet. <laughs> it's a, It's right out of the bag. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So um, it, it it's going to be uh, fun. Um, the idea of it is that algorithms are used in everything, right? And Rubik's cube uh, algorithms are uh, really neat in in the sense that with something so handy, they they uh, try to apply their brains uh, the way coders do, the way um, you know, any uh, embedded systems developer like myself does. So that's sort of like uh, what the intent of the session is going to be. So how can they apply anything that has to do with Rubik's Cube to a sustainable development goal? I'm curious about that. You know, how do we how do we link it back? Because that's one of the things that we're going to be emphasizing throughout the week is the concept of sustainable development goals. And how does this link to that? So it's like, uh, are algorithms used in food production? Are algorithms, where else might algorithm, are they used in farming? Are they used in a whole bunch of different things? So I think talking about those kinds of concepts with the kids and having them understand mm -hmm. that this is, uh, you know, algorithms are used everywhere. And it's, you may not think of it as coding or you may not think of it as algorithm. You may think of it as being logical or, you know, something that makes sense. But so I think we should all be looking for opportunities to tie whatever it is that we're doing to real life. Yeah. Well, then, yeah. Go ahead. Do we have questions for Somia and Laura? Laura, you were going to say something. I know you work in manufacturing. Um, well, you, you um, emphasize as well that um, algorithms could be used in remanufacturing, um, but there's certainly many areas where they can be used. And um, I'll make sure that I do plenty of research to emphasize that point as well. That would be good. You yeah, know, one I of the things that <clears throat> one of the things that we do, uh, we we are um, trying to uh, develop is a reusable battery, right? Um, and some of the algorithms that uh, folks and the you know uh, uh, companies that are looking into alternative energy uh, and uh, sources and things like that are. Uh, they're, what, are, what they're looking into is uh, battery uh, performance and how you would be monitoring it, uh, how you would monitor the surge in, uh, say, um, uh, voltage or heat or uh, the thermal management part of it. So, and uh, 
in there, I mean, to monitor it and to control or uh, even like um, turn it off or on at certain times, uh, like we have solar panels on our, at our house uh, to turn them off or turn them on. We, we uh, turn the, uh, 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 reconfigure the inverters a certain way. You would have to use algorithms uh, to write the controls um, for those systems. So algorithms are used in every single um, space that you can think of. So, it, and, and it will obviously make everything more sustainable in the future. I mean, is it realistic to think of algorithms as just, it's the formula for whatever it is that you're trying to define. So if you're trying to turn your air conditioner on at a, a certain time when it reaches a certain temperature, what's the formula for telling the air conditioner to turn on? And I exactly. think, you know, trying to find those very, um, simple concepts to share with people. I mean, there's a lot of algorithms around us all, all the time and just finding some that are, that are real. You know, that's the important thing. Algorithm for when to watch TV that dad's not watching it, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> How do I figure that out? Other questions we have for Sonia or Laura about the Rubik's Cube. Is there a certain way you would best, you'd recommend to best approach like helping the girls practice or something? Because I know something like this could be easy to say, oh, well, just do that. Like, is there be the best way to help them learn? So, um, Lara, uh, you've done it before, maybe. Uh, yeah, you should I was gonna say that, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was going to say that the way that we did it, we actually, um, we actually use the instructions that were provided by Rubik's Cube and they are very detailed um, and that, you know, that helped most of, that helped most of the people in the workshop and, um, you know, um, saw me as well that uh, somebody within our, our group also created a video that is uh, mm -hmm. uh, very step-by-step -step to, to help them also mm -hmm. uh, navigate more easily into how to better or easily solve yeah. it. So, I so think, the I video is them, letting them know ahead of time that that this is not something that you have to solve. It's going to teach you how to get there. And so it may take a while. It may take quite a while for them to get to the point where they can solve it. But it you're giving them the basic tools for it. Right. Mm -hmm. Right, yep. right. Yep, and exactly. It will, it will take practice. And um, before we started uh, solving it, some of us were exchanging experiences of how long it had taken us to to solve our first one. So, you know, some people said it took me about a week. It took me about a month. Or it took me a whole day just doing it all over, over and over again all the time. So um, it's not easy, but it, it's definitely something satisfying once uh, you're able to get to get there. So, and and it maybe we'll have some kids get there. Maybe we won't have any get there. Who knows? We'll try. We'll see what happens. Ninety minutes is a bit of time to be able to play around with it. And normally, you do it in what forty five minutes or an hour. So, hopefully, that gives us a little bit more time to work through it. What else? Uh, another thing, uh, another thing I would like to add is <clears throat> that video uh, uh, that Kade made. Um, my uh, our friend from Central Illinois, she uh, has gone over everything very slowly, step by step, and she is like holding up the cube, and uh, it's very detailed. And all of us are going to follow the same algorithm, right? So you don't have to worry about. Uh, there are several algorithms to solve a Rubik's Cube, but the one that we are going to follow is the one that's out there in her video and the handout um, document that you guys have been provided. So I'd recommend also, like, if it's easier for you, take a printout, but we are all about sustainability. So if you have two monitors, just, like, plop the instructions on one monitor and... Um, or, you know, at least have it on your screen at all times in, on your laptop so you can refer to it uh, whenever. Um, and um, yeah, and we, we will be sort of like the wranglers or uh, the workshop presenters. So we'll be jumping from room to room. So, <laughs> so and again, uh, we'll be jumping from, yeah. we'll, have, we'll have WhatsApp. So if you have a question or you have a specific thing and you just let us know and we'll send somebody into your room. 
That'll be pretty easy. We're going to have a smaller number of rooms at night. So they'll probably be between 10 and 15 rooms at night rather than 20 rooms. So it'll, it should be a little bit easier to, to room hop. Any other questions for Somya and Laura? Again, there is a document, a Google form up there. If you've got any specific questions that you want to enter in that to ask about, that'd be great. I, I was just going to offer a point. Um, I also think it's about tenacity because I always say engineers aren't necessarily smarter. They're just more tenacious. <laughs> a lot of people, because, well, my stepdaughter just gives up right away. And, I, you know, it's just, and my parent, and just sitting there, not if if you don't aren't successful, that doesn't mean you're not successful. You're learning from your failures, and you you know that this is not the way to do it. There's an so I, I think that's important because I see a lot of girls giving up. Don't really. give up. I see boys giving up too. But. And, well, we talked a lot last year about epic fails. We celebrated our fails and, you know, we were looking for like, so what really did you screw up today? And so it's, uh, you're talking about failure. If you're not trying, you're not going to fail, which is, right. great. you know, you'll never fail, but you'll also never be able to know success, super success when you think you were going to fail and you didn't. And it's like, that's such an awesome feeling. So I think that's kind of the sense that we want to give kids is if you need to try it um, and then pick yourself back up. And I think that resilience thing, Wendy, is a very, very important message to carry over. Absolutely. Um, Thank you got, for sharing. We have a couple more things, uh, a couple more sessions we have to cover here. I know we're going to go long on time, but um, if we've got questions for Somia, like I said, we can um, get them into the uh the document that's in the website so that you can write them down and we'll get them to them and see if we can't get answers for you prior to the sessions. And just for those of you who are gonna be around two or three sessions, you will be able to do it by the third session, okay? You will be able to do it by July 30th or 29th or whatever the day is for those of you who are gonna be here all three camps. Okay, let's move on, Megan. Hi, everybody. Yay, let me pin you. I'm going to pin you and I'm going to unpin Laura. And uh, unpin you. There we go. And now we got Megan. Hey, hello, my friends. Um, it has been so much fun to hear all the presenters talking about their math and engineering. Um, I'm a chef. So we're going to be baking pizza dough because math is on the menu. I'm really excited about this um, to share with you guys and to share with the girls, um, to share with them an easy, um, accessible recipe that you can make with all sorts of dietary restrictions and how to multiply it uh, to a great degree if you wanted to have a pizza party for 100 people. Um, so math is on the menu. Math is everywhere. As much as I tried to escape it, um, it math is definitely my life as a chef. And I want the girls to see that that is, it is special, it's applicable, and it's something that they can bring into their daily life. Um, so my agenda is posted into, um, into the Google folder. So hopefully everyone can see the agenda if they're planning to coach through my session. Um, so we'll start out with some introductions and hellos, and then I'm going to demonstrate the, how to make the pizza dough. And the reason why I'm doing that first, it is definitely a little bit of a messy project. They're going to be making pizza dough themselves um, is because pizza dough has to proof. So we'll be doing some biological scientific reactions that happen within the recipe. Um, and my hope is that this turns into dinner for them and their family. Um, so they get to eat part of the workshop, which I think will be really cool. Um, so we'll make the, I'll make the pizza dough. They'll head into their breakout session and um, hopefully that's a lot of fun. And before they come back in, they'll then set their dough to proof, which is putting it into a bowl and covering it with a rag or some saran wrap because it, the, the biological reaction of the yeast needs to happen. Uh, then we're going to move into some math and conversions. We'll, um, your friendly chef will be walking you through some math, and these girls are going to run circles around me, but um, we'll go through 
how to multiply your recipe for not just four people, but into eight servings, and then we'll move it from four servings to 25 servings. I have included a conversion worksheet along with um, some common conversions. So if we're moving it from four servings to 100 servings, um, we don't want to do 100 teaspoons of sugar. We're, we will break it down into some further easier accessible things. When you're working with larger quantities, you want to work into cups or into other things. Um, and we are not on the metric system uh, with our common cooking here in America. Um, our professional chefs are using the metric system, but um, we're still in the American system in the American kitchen home. Um, the breakout will, the second breakout will be uh, moving into conversion worksheets with the coaches. And of course I'm available, will be available via WhatsApp to come in and talk through that if they'd like. And then we'll bring everybody back in We'll then shape out pizza dough. We can do that together and we'll finish our pizza and we'll put it in the oven. Uh, I wish I could share it with everybody and break bread together, but that's not on the menu this time, pun intended. And the conclusion of the event is to please share your pizza with your family or keep it for yourself. You know, it's up to you, but uh, math is on the menu and that's my class. What questions do we have for Meg? Yes, Heidi. So you said professional chefs use the metric system. Can you plug that, please? <laughs> yes, I definitely will. We measure everything. It's it makes way more sense. But the you know the popular culture is to use cups and teaspoons and things in the uh, regular American households instead of what like a thousand cc's or is that like grams? So most professional chefs and bakers have the just the little cute scales, and you can weigh out all of your ingredients. It's much more accurate. Um, so I will definitely plug that. I, you know, I remember having a conversation. My sister went through a, a master baking um, mm -hmm. for a couple years. And one of the things I remember her talking about, and I never really thought about it, was the ratios of like liquid to, to fats and, and to all of that. And it's like, oh, that's kind of some interesting thing, thinking about, you know, for baking, how critical it is to make sure rather than, okay, two teaspoons, it's more like, no, really what you wanna do is make sure you have a ratio between your dry and your wet of X. And right. so I think those are key things to also talk to them about. It's not so much a magic formula as it is an algorithm. There you go. Okay, I didn't know that you could learn how to do a Rubik's cube until we got on this call. I thought it was just sheer luck until you started talking about that. <laughs> yeah, just like my husband didn't know you could learn how to cook. <laughs> hey. I have a question. Yeah. Um, now, did you want the coaches to go ahead and make the dough as well, along with? Yes, you can make the dough and whatever it facilitates the best for you. So if you feel that making it alongside your, your campers feels right and makes sense for you without getting too distracted, go for it. Otherwise, you can coach them through the different steps as they're walking through it. Whatever works best for you. Great. You might, you might have to think about like, I'm going to do it via my cell phone instead of, or I'm going to connect into Zoom so I can walk around and prop it up against my counter versus being on my desktop, for instance. Right, that's what I was thinking. It's like, I have a desktop. I yeah. don't want flower. <laughs> yeah, that is a kind of a funny yeah. one. So everyone okay. will be in front of their computers. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great, thanks. Other questions for Meg? Cool. Good. You're all master pizza makers. I love it. There you go. There you go. Let me see if I can unpin you now. Okay. I don't know. Hmm. <sighs> what happens is my thing gets in the way and then I can't find you. I can't find the unpinning part. Let's try this. Well, I'm looking forward to the camp with everyone. So thank you for your time today. Yeah, thank you. I have another question. I'm sorry. I, yeah. Yeah. Toppings. Are, are you going to go over toppings? <laughs> we'll definitely go over toppings. Um, and I think as I'm, I'm making it, what we'll say is, you know, pizza is one of those things that you can just empty the fridge with, right? Some things that you didn't necessarily want to use on anything else. It's a really unique recipe. So we can encourage people like, 
go into your fridge. Let's start looking and thinking about your toppings and I'll have some that work for me. And because we're virtual and we're not sending out ingredients per se for toppings, this is really like a place where they can get creative and look at maybe doing like a, a cinnamon and sugar pizza or like a Nutella pizza. They could also do something savory and fun. Thank Definitely. You. That sounds great. That sounds I'm great. hungry right now. I mean, I'm always hungry, but yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Let me get back to the gallery view. Okay, so thank you so much, Meg. Um, and hopefully everybody will, uh, if you've got questions for Meg, she also has her own sheet that you can share with her there. So you, if you've got questions, you can ask her questions. So the last thing we're gonna talk about is the engineering workshops. And I've done put uh, a bit of information up there about uh, the blowing in the wind, pretty straightforward. Um, and it's pretty, um, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. This is more time. Usually we allow about 45 minutes to do this. So there is quite a bit of time to enable the kids to be able to build their own turbines. But uh, there's not, I think I gave you a, uh, uh, walked you through one guide. You can use that, uh, modify the PowerPoint presentation. I think I did it in PDF. Uh, instead of PDF, you can just use that uh, from the, I think it was from Invent and Build It, Sweeze Invent and Build It. You can use that to explain it to the kids in the breakout room if you want. Um, I'm going to go over a little bit of it up front, but once we talk about some basic concepts like a wheel and a shaft, then it's all pretty much you guys figure out how to make it work. And so using bearings and a lot of that is explained in the leader notes. So questions about the blowing in the wind. <clears throat> it can be anything you want. What we've got, what we told the kids was to find an empty leader bottle to use as their tower, but you could use a shoe box. You can use uh, something that's gonna enable them to stick a skewer through, stick a shaft through and have bearings on either side of it. So I've used both. I'll show you one of the ones I did last year. So, oh, hang on. Yeah, maybe this is, this is what I did last year and I just found a box and there's this, the skewer and I cut a cup and I made, I actually took the cup and made like darts in it to make it a little curvier so that it would catch the wind a little bit more. Each of the girls is gonna have a fan in their kit so that they will be able to test. And then it's just a matter of, I've got the bag on the back here. It's tied with um, paper clip and the string and then a way to keep it from falling off on the back end of it there so that it doesn't, the string doesn't come off. If you look real close, there's some straws where the shaft is going through because that's one of the, probably the most important things about turbines is lack of friction. You don't want to have friction because then you're going to be burning it up, number one. And so that's what bearings do is they enable it to move more freely than it otherwise would have moved. So just think about that. And you wanna basically try and get to the concept of having this disc, as they describe it, you see this disc back here, I don't know what I made it, a postal service box. Um, it, you can pick any size, you know, the, the issue is you don't want it to be real big because then you're gonna have issues with um, getting it to turn it off. And so you want it to be small enough so that they can manage it, but big enough so that when it turns, it can do the heavy lifting of lifting up this, however many pennies that they're able to make it lift up. So questions about the, the blowing in the wind. Yay. Oh, actually, have. sorry, yeah. I have a question. Yeah. So for this and just other workshops in general where we're showing the campers what to do, do you recommend we join with another device to use it as like a dot cam? I would, I would suggest if you need to show them, I think, let's see if I'm, I don't think I'm plugged in on that one. 
Um, I have a separate doc cam. I know Heidi's got a doc cam set up a couple or she's got some kind of setup set up on her laptop. So if you've got a doc cam, that's really probably the best because you don't have to jury rig, but you can Google using your cell phone as a doc cam um, so that it'll tell you how to do that. And we can just add that, add your cell phone in as an entry into the workshop. So those are the things we can work out the details on. But yes, I would recommend, especially if you want to show them things up close, it's much better than as I was just trying to show you. And it's fading in and out of the background screen, right? So as another side note for everybody on the call, you need to make sure you've got the latest version of Zoom because it's that later version of Zoom, for instance, that enables me to blur. It's not on the earlier versions of Zoom. So I see several of you already have it. That's great. Several of you have lovely background pictures. Just make sure it's not artwork that is famous artwork that we then have to reference if we have a video somewhere and we have to get permission. So you want to make sure that you have the latest version. People on Chrome apparently don't have the same ability to do anything with their backgrounds. So um, you're going to just be limited to what you have, and you'll have to make sure that what's ever behind you um, doesn't show pictures of, you know, things that we might have to get citations on. Um, other questions on the turban one? Nada. Lisa, are you still on? Yeah, I'm still here. Yay. Thank you, Lisa. Thank no, you for coming. No Let problem. I will continue to talk so you can find me. Yay. That helps. I got you spotlighted now. All right. So, thank you. Introduce yourself. Um, my name is Lisa. I'm a community college professor of physics and astronomy, and I also do the planetarium shows at the Fleet Science Center in Balboa Park here in San Diego. And so what I'll be doing is a sky. So this workshop is called Twinkle Twinkle. Uh, we'll be doing a sky tour uh, showing uh, what's up in the sky tonight and talking about constellations. And then the students will be going into students. I know I call everyone students. Um, the students will be going into breakout rooms uh, and we'll be constructing constellations with LEDs uh, and wire and batteries. And then um, once we're done with that part of the session, uh, I'm just going to do Q&A for physics and astronomy questions for the rest of the time. Um, uh, if 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 they have if any of the campers have questions while in the breakout rooms, I'll float in between them. Um, if students say like uh, if students ask any of the coaches in the rooms like oh I heard that there's two new missions going to be going to Venus and you're like I don't know anything about that, I'll talk to them about that. So one of the great things about doing astronomy stuff is we tend to get lots of questions. We could probably do 90 minutes of Q and A. Um, and keep it going. So, uh, but I will be using a planetarium software um, to show off the sky uh, two dimensionally instead of in a planetarium, unfortunately, uh, but hopefully get a feel for what's up in the sky that night. Um, I was trying to think of how to tie it into sustainability. We could do a couple of different things, right? Um, we can talk about how uh, the LEDs act as resistors and they draw current off the battery and the equation for power is power is equal to current squared times the resistance. Um, we could also talk about what happens if you take one of the stars out of the constellation, what happens to the total brightness of the constellation and stuff like that. And that talks about how much um, energy is being used. Uh, but we can also talk about it holistically in terms of astronomy. Um, we study the greenhouse effect, not just on earth, but on Mars and Venus. Um, and so we know how things work that way if we're talking about um, understanding climate change and how the atmosphere works and um, relating that to everyday life. And then, you know, uh, astronomy itself is a fundamental science. We learned a lot about physics just by looking at the sky. And so now we have things like um, the Starlink project where there are uh, communications companies sending up constellations of satellites that are obscuring our view of the sky. And so how does that change? I think that's a really important thing. I, there is a huge environmental sustainability. There's, there's a, there's a, 
with these satellite constellations, something is happening to the environment of the Earth that didn't have to go through environmental impact reports. Right, it's, uh, and it's not on the it's not on the ground, right? It, it got approved because they're telecommunication companies. They didn't have to go through that sort of procedure. And so uh, we're changing the sky for everyone. And so that is another thing that some of us care very passionately about is uh, keeping the sky safe for everyone for the future. So that was just a quick rundown of what we're doing. Yeah. And then we'll, we'll get into it in a whole lot more detail. So in, in the materials you've got, I'm going to try and pull together a quick write up for you for the actual breakout sessions for those of you who are in the workout sessions themselves to be able to explain what it is and how the kids need to go about doing it. Because what's there right now is kind of a written PowerPoint document and you're, I mean, not PowerPoint, Word document, and you're not going to share that with the campers. So I'm going to try and pull something together for you between now and next, um, excuse me, next Wednesday so that you have that at your fingertips um, and we'll be able to walk them through what the expectation is with the LEDs. So just a comment, you're only going to have one little coin battery, a little, what are they, one and a half volts, three, three volts, uh, less than five volts kind of a thing. So you're going to have five volts of energy. And I, as you were talking, Lisa, I was thinking in space, do the same laws apply that energy can neither be destroyed nor created in space? And I think that whole concept about energy, um, what's your available energy and how, how the brightness of things are linked to what energy is available there. So you've got, you know, we're going to have up to 10 LEDs that they could put into their constellation if they choose to design one of the more complicated constellations from what we gave them. But what's going to happen if they're only using a five volt battery? So you're going to end up having a very dim constellation. However, they're also, they have a nine volt battery they could play with too. And so there's some things that you could think about with them, um, discussing with them as they design their constellation that they need to, or think about, well, how about if I want to put this color LED from my robotics kit, which all you got for the um, Twinkle Twinkle was clear, but there's some colored ones in your robotics kit. And there's nothing that says that they can also tap into those. So I think there's some options there that you can play with them on in terms of suggesting that they, uh, how they, how they actually design, or they can come up with a brand new constellation. They can design their own. That'd be totally cool too. And then be able to do that. So questions that we have for Lisa or about the activity itself. I have a question. Yes. I was, I was going through it and I didn't understand the part about the flap and how that works. And it's could a you switch. The, the flap will be a switch. So you're actually gonna have the ability when you press that flap down, it's gonna make contact between the, the battery. Essentially what you wanna do is create a switch that you can just by pressing down on the tape onto the battery, the coin cell, it's gonna close the circuit. But and yeah, so I just wasn't sure how that was constructed. Um, I don't know that I have a picture of it. I'll have to see if I can find something that has a picture of that. But I'm guessing it's just going to, you just want to make sure that you have it folded. I'm thinking, but let okay. me see if I can find something on that. Thank you. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Any, any, anything to keep the, the switch open while they're constructing it and then throw the switch at the very end, because even those small batteries, if you only have got one LED in your circuit can draw off some current, some yeah. decent size current. And so we might actually also want to recommend that like your constellation needs to have a minimum of three stars in it or something yeah. like that to help actually control the current. Yep. That's a good point. Another question. Now, Cause well, what I got is uh, copper tape. Yep. And so with this, the um, constellations we're going to have to be kind of going around corners, right? Is that um, going to bend or? Uh, yeah, I mean, you're, you've got a lot of copper tape and you could probably, I'm, I'm assuming as long as you have contact, play, play with it a little bit to see 
yourself, how you could set it up and, and can you cut a piece and can you then put two pieces of the copper tape, lay it one on top of the other? Are you still connected or does the whole thing have to be connected? So I would play with it a little bit because you've got some good length of, they're not going to use the two yards or, you know, arm and a half span. We gave them a bunch. So yes, Meg. Okay. See you. Bye mommy. <laughs> see you next week. Um, yeah, good questions, Carol. Good questions. And I would say that, that this is one of those that you can easily play with just to see what you can do differently or how things work or, you know, is it, is it going to be responsive enough that if you bend it a little bit, it, it will, or if you fold it onto itself, will it still function properly? Really right, all about right. Right. Or will you, you know, if you cut it, will it still function like you Correct. said? Yeah. Correct. I think as long as you have it still touching a hundred percent, I don't think the cut matters, but I don't know that. I haven't played with it myself. So I'll find mm -hmm. out. And then the other thing to be aware of whenever you're actually using like the LEDs have the two little pins at the bottom, um, make sure that when you put in the pins that um, you don't tear out big holes because that actually is one of the biggest places where students lose con connectivity is they make the a hole in the tape itself or whatever material that they're pressing into a little bit too big. So like if you reuse electrical paper over and over again, um, it's not that the paper gets used up, it's that students tend to like want to reconstruct what people did before them and they keep plugging into the same hole not to do more damage and uh suddenly the hole's too big and you don't have contact so that's another thing to look to look for um and if they're using multiple batteries the polarity uh look to see right. if uh, the the polarity is uh all going in the same direction as opposed to having two positives against each other or two negatives against each other. And, and, and the good news is that we're going to be covering that on Tuesday and Wednesday in the robotic session. We're going to be talking about circuits and LEDs and the polarity issues and all of that. So this will be a, a re-emphasis of what they already learned that morning or the afternoon. So I really like that aspect of this. Other questions? Yes, Heidi. I have a completely unrelated question to Kim. <laughs> Should I wait till later? <laughs> uh, you don't have to. Go ahead. Is uh, the fleet ever going to have Phantom of the Universe? Um, I don't know. Um, what we have the ability to get it varies greatly and the licenses also the cost very greatly and what we're actually excited about is we're going back into the planetarium in person next month for the first time since march of 2020 so um but and um there will be some changes in the planetarium coming up in the fall but i can't say any more than that right now oh bummer it's gonna be pretty cool other questions I have a question, but not related to this workshop. Is that okay? Sure. I'm going to. Okay, so you mentioned that the attendance sheets are going to be on the Google Drive. And I have a link to a Google Drive for the workshops and one for um, the, the social coaches. And so are, are those the, the where I look for this attendance sheet? Will it show up there or? I'm not sure which Google it, Drive. It's probably going to be the, the attendance sheets will probably be in for each workshop. So you will have an attendance sheet that will be set up for um, the DNA workshop. And so there will be, well, we have to figure out the, the whole logistics of it and which, um, which breakout group is going to be in which one, but we'll work those details out. Okay. But thank for ask, thanks for asking. Makes me think about what needs to happen. So. That's helpful. Other questions? Amelia, Allison, Krista, Olivia. Okay. Sounds like um, I'm going to see a couple of you on Thursday. So on Thursday, however, we're probably going to spend time in breakouts 
so that you can get to know the other coaches in the room. And that's going to be probably the most important thing is that we're going to have you work with the other coaches in the room to figure out who's going to do what, to make introductions and to talk about the things that um, are going to need to be talked about with the kids. So, and do we need to do that for the workshop too? When we have breakouts, do we need to know who's doing what in those breakout rooms? You will need to know who's doing what. And that's why I said, I'm, I'm, th I'm rethinking my whole idea about not giving you pre-assigned breakouts because it does make it a little bit easier if they're pre-assigned um, to know who's in your room and therefore you can work out the details ahead of time. You know, where if Carol, you knew who your other three coaches were, the three of you, four of you could work out who is going to do what of the tasks. And there's there's fewer tasks in the workshop breakouts than there are in the uh, the robotics breakouts. So there's going to be some more things you need to do in robotics than in the workshop. But I'll I'll relook at that um, breakouts for workshops. And the thing is, you know, we're doing this three times. So we may find out the first time that the, uh, there's a better way to, to, to skin that cat. And so we'll redo that in the next go round. And we'll talk about the changes for the next time. Other questions? Is there somewhere we can register, join the WhatsApps? Um, you would download, you need to download it on your phone. And yeah, but for the specific groups. So what I'm going to do is set those groups up and then I will, once I set them up, I'm assuming I'm going to invite all of you to participate, but you also will be able, I'll add you to the groups. So you may not have to answer an invite. It may automatically pop up in your WhatsApp, but if you're not in there, I can't pick you. So you have to be able to be, you have to be signed up for WhatsApp first. Yeah, so for that, do we need to like share our like account information, like our name and stuff, or do you already? You're going to have to go on and set up your profile. So if you're signing up, most most people, if you've been on for a while, you have a profile, you got a picture on it, you got whatever, it tells your name. If you, it's the first time you've done it, it's going to have that, you know, that face, the, the just uh, the head, the circle thing, and it won't have your name and it might have your phone number, but you need to go through and set up your profile in WhatsApp. And like I said, this is a phone app. You actually can get it on your desktop. I have it on my desktop too. So it's much easier for me to, to be able to do some things on my desktop, um, but you have it on your phone to start. And then if you do put it on your desktop, you're going to have to get a special code that you're going to use your phone for it to, to link the two of them. So it's going to say, how am I linked to my desktop? And it's always through your phone. And by the way, it's encrypted. So for people who are worried about security, um, all the conversations are encrypted. So it's not like somebody can come in and, and you know, try and get into our conversation or pull information out of our conversation. We, this is Tara. We may still have to provide you with our what our contact is because you might have one email and I might have WhatsApp on a different email, for example. So you may need us to still provide you with what our WhatsApp uh, name is. Well, you're a WhatsApp. So if I go to look for you, I may not be able to find it. And that's very real. And, and I'll let you know if I can't find you. OK, <laughs> I'll say, where are you? I need you. What else, folks? Um, I have a quick question. Sorry, Hi, go ahead. That's all right, Hannah. Go ahead. Oh, okay. I have a quick question about the time. So on my name tag, it says like I'm only doing 3.30 to 5. And yeah, that, that was strictly for get, making sure that kits got into the kit thing. So you're actually doing, you're, 
it, that assumes that you're doing the first session automatically. Our inbox and your oh, okay. So if I don't have the kits for the first session, I should email you. Right? Yes, ma'am, please, because there were some confusion from some of the coordinators about that. That's correct. So if you don't have those kits, you should email me. If you've got your um, tag and it has not been scanned yet, you can go ahead and scan it. Go ahead and scan it and press the press the go in button. And that way it should trigger a message coming to you so that you can tell me what's wrong. Tell me what's missing. Uh, I'm still collecting information from our end. So um, just- uh, What else do we got? Next Thursday. Whoops, Amelia, you're on mute kinda, but you're not showing mute. No, I still can't hear it. Let's see if I can ask you to unmute. Mute. Sounds like a, f yeah, I don't think it's gonna work right now. Okay, Lisa, see you next week. Thank you. Bye. Other can questions? You hear me? Now I can hear you, yes. Okay, awesome. <laughs> I'm wondering if you know a quick way to use a webcam as a document camera. Um. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can hang it from somewhere, you know, if you've got your webcam, you hang it up, hang it from, tape it up to like, I have a credenza behind my computer. I could theoretically tape it up there to hang it if I wanted and it would be pointed down at the surface. If you really want it to be something that's pointed down at a surface so that okay. you know what's going on under it. You don't want it to be something that you're trying to show people out here. You want it to be above and if you have some kind of a green um a green mat or something some way to uh have a contrast between whatever you're showing them and uh the background behind it that really helps so if you're trying to show them a piece of paper and you're on a piece of paper that's not going to work real well if you're showing them a piece of paper and you're on a dark surface then it'll show up better and, and you weren't looking for us to have, though, like, be able to show our face and our paper, correct? Yes, preferably. You want to be able to show both your face or go back. You don't want to do one of those. Here, let me flip the camera around and let me look down here. You want it to be set up so that you have one that's like for mine, I could go in and I can change my video out. Right. So I can set up my video. And then when you go down and you look at the drop downs, I have three or four different cameras set up in my Zoom setup so that I can pick any of those cameras to, let me see if I can plug this in. I can pick any of those cameras to make life and to enable me to um, show what's on that. I don't think I can do it with, Let's just see if I can switch. So now if you look at my camera, it, it's not working because that's not, the camera's not really set up properly on it. Oh, this one here, this is what I wanna do. So this is my hover cam, right? This is my dock cam. And if I was gonna be working on something under here, it's like I've got my surface down here where you could um, show people things that are going on turn on record or whatever I have here. And so this, you're gonna basically see, this is if you were a, a coach and you wanted to show them some notes or draw a picture of them, you would do that right down here where the, the, the surface is below the dock cam. You can set up a web, a, a, your phone to do the same thing. You just need to set it up high enough so that you have the ability to get something underneath it too. And this one is not set up very high. So let me, there, that's going to be better. So now it's much, you know, it's going to be a much bigger field to do it in. But there are ways to set that up with your webcam. And that just makes it a little bit easier to, um, to show people what's going on than to try and to, to hold them up in front of your screen. Um, like here, if I'm trying to hold it up here, it, you know, it's like, okay, where is it exactly to try and show people? So just a little bit easier to have the doc cam set up. Did that answer your question, Amelia? 
Oh, you went off mute again. Yeah. So you're not, you don't want us to be able, there's, oh shoot. Go ahead. You're good. No. Okay. Sorry. My computer's being really funky. I won't have it like this for tech truck. Um, (laughs) But (laughs) I don't know what's going on. You, You, there's no way to like picture and webcam in the same like video screen. You just switch back and forth. Yeah. You switch okay. back. And yep. Now you could. Now theoretically, though, I guess I could come in. I could log in with a different device and actually have two devices created. And we we did have that happen last last year too, where you actually have a Mary I AC and then you have a Mary I Doc Cam. And so I would know then to let that in as a doc cam. And we did have a few of those last year where the campers or the coaches set up two um, logins and they had two different devices set up at the same time. Not like I did where you switch with your video, but where you actually have to, you have two separate inputs or, you know, two separate screens showing at the same time. And that one you could do too. Something that, a couple, something that a couple of my friends have done for various school projects is set up their phone because they have like an Apple computer and an iPhone, set up their phone to be another camera on Zoom and just share screen. So that way, essentially they're sharing the, their phone screen, but using the computer um computer video on zoom that way they just open the camera app on their phone so that way you can have both going if you want to if you don't really have access and and we did we spent a lot of time googling last year trying to find out the best way to do this and and so i encourage you to go out there and see and i'm sure because that was before everybody was really doing a lot virtually now there are so many people having to do things virtually there's probably a zillion um, video clips out there that tell you how to do it, the best way to do it, or here's a here's a way you can do it with an Android, or here's a way to do it with this or that. So I would check those out and see if you can find something that works better for you. What else? And we'll talk more about that Thursday too. Um, I have a question. I was wondering if you could like send out an email with just like a list of all the secondary materials that we need. Yeah. Like, um, that the one that I sent to the first that they have to have from home or what? what? Yeah, stuff from home, like stuff for like the pizza dough. And I think we needed some stuff for the DNA that wasn't yeah. in the kit. Yes. And it wasn't in your instructions. I The campers have it. You don't have it. I gave it to yeah. them. And um, additionally, I... I'm using a Chromebook as like my computer to use for Zoom and the coding for a social coach. Yeah. I know this is a workshop meeting, but I have been unable to get the Arduino um, code app on it. I've been trying to connect to connect with the administrator to unblock it. Oh. But, yeah. Um, do you have an alternate um, device to use for coding? Um, I might be able to use like a parent's laptop unless they need it for work. Yeah. Um, and, and the coding part of it, you know, there are some social coaches, you're not a build coach, right? So, um, one of the social coaches was saying she only had a tablet and I'm like, okay, well, you can't really code on a tablet. So, but you can zoom and you don't have to code. It'd be nice if you had the ability to do that as a, a social coach, but if you're not going to go through the whole project, then you don't need to worry about it. There's not a whole lot of um, like heavy duty coding that has to be done, but there is enough that you're going to have to you're going to have to probably at least understand it. Again, there's going to be two one to two build coaches in every room, every breakout room. So from a coding perspective. Um, there should be somebody else there, the build coach, that is going to be on top of what needs to happen coding-wise. Yeah, sorry, could you say that again? One of my devices just died, so I, like, missed all of that. <laughs> so all I said is that it's going to be a, um, you won't have to as a social coach, you won't have to coach or code or exactly know how to code because you have enough 
build coaches in each breakout room with you that they can, they'll be knowledgeable about the coding aspects of it. There's not an expectation that you actually do the whole project, but if you want to do the whole project, that's fine. So, you know, you can also maybe do the coding on the other machine and then just transfer it loaded onto your Arduino. And then you would have that code on your Arduino already. So there, but that's, it's a, it's an iterative thing. When you're doing the coding, you're going to do coding and then you're going to add more code and then you're going to add more code. And with Arduino, every time you do that, you have to reload it. It's not like it's going to remember um, the whatever program. It's a very instant take, kind of like a five-year-old, you know, they just remember whatever you told them just now. And so it's, it's going to be something like that. Other questions about any of it, the workshops in particular, but like I said, we're gonna have a whole nother discussion on Thursday night and a little bit more depth about the build and social coaches. Can, can I add to what you said about the Arduino? Yeah, please, Heidi. So if your parents need their computers for work, you could still try to do the as as mary said you could try to do that coding at night or something or you know at another time if you don't have the computer available during that camp time and load it up to the arduino and even though it's iterative if you if you go the full steps of the day you could load up the final end result for that day the night before or something and your arduino will function just like it would if you had the computer, but you might need an extra battery or two or three. Right, because um, do you have, well, her Chrome, no, she. you can't even get the power if it doesn't hook up to the Arduino, can you? I don't, I don't I'm think- I'm not sure about that. I'm, I'm I, I'd sure. have to think about that. I'll ask Kim that question. If you hook the cable up to say your Chrome, even though your Chrome doesn't have, can't code, um, <coughs> Will it still provide power it still to the provide Arduino? Power. It will. It will. It will. Yeah, okay. Yes, it will. So you should be able to at least use it as a power source for your Arduino and keep your battery from dying out. Yeah. Um, I the the thing about getting in touch with the school. Are you out of class already? Are you done with school? So you can't go back to your coach. Who was that? Kelly? Yeah, I I messaged a teacher to try and see if they could talk to the IT. Yeah, person and they did reach out, but you know how it is with that kind yeah. of stuff. It probably will take a while. Yeah, let's see what they say. Let's see what they say and if if that's uh, a possibility. Okay, what else? <clears throat> I certainly think that's enough fun and games for tonight. I don't know about the rest of you. It's. Uh, we're going to do a couple more hours on Thursday night. So hopefully some of the questions, you know, most of you are here. And so we may not get the same questions over again. That'd be great. And then we'll just be able to spend time on what we need to know. Cool. Okay. Well, if nobody else has questions, I'm going to talk to Mickey. Okay. For Mary, a while. Can, I, can I quickly ask you about um, sure. a Lindsay? I didn't see her in the email. And I didn't well, see one of the reasons she wasn't in the email is she didn't finish her paperwork. Is she, is she still going to do it? Or yeah, she is. Know? I think she's just kind of stuck in it. Um, she okay. didn't. She never did the the train the kits training. She never finished it. So she's showing as partially complete. Okay. For that, um, and what happens is that message then doesn't get triggered that you got that said. Mary's done or, or is being sent her countdown or whatever it is. You won't okay. get that message until she completes the rest of the paperwork. Okay. I will, I will try to contact her and let her know to complete that. I, yeah, I will... Just to go back in the email message for the, um, I think it's the one that's called um, welcome or no, I think it's the kits training schedule kits and training. Oh my. So if she goes in and completes that, then she'll automatically get sent the countdown. Okay. Okay. <laughs> hey, Serene. I look forward to working with you next week. Thanks, hon.
Thank you. Oh, I look forward to it too. Hey, Angela, Sonia, Lauren, Amelia, Evelyn, Faith. I have a question. Sure. On Sunday, how long is the meeting going to be? On on Sunday. Yeah, on Sunday. Oh, for the Rubik. Is that the is it, no? Which one are we doing? Water. 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 Um. Probably, what do you think, Mickey, an hour? I'd guess an hour. Yeah, let's figure yeah. an hour. And we'll, okay. video, we'll video it so you'll be able to look at it after. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye, okay. everyone. Have a great night. Yes, we'll see you next week. I have a question for you, um, Mary. Mm -hmm. uh, more of a specific question. So on Tuesday, it was going to be this past Monday, but my college moved our freshman class sign up to Tuesday. Yeah, I don't know why I was all ready to not have that in the middle of Tech Trek. Um, but do you mind if I take like 20 to 30 minutes on Tuesday to do that? Go for it. Go for it. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Time, it's going to be in the morning or the afternoon? One o'clock. So it actually falls right during the talk. Something that yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. That would be fine. That's fine. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Mary, for your time. Good night. Okay, Susan. We'll see you later. Take care now. Yep. Turned out great. Yep. Okay, Mickey. Yes. Why can't you see me? Uh, that's a great question. Let's see what's going on. You made a sign out and back in? Yeah. Why don't you? I'm going to stop the recording here. Let me do that. And I would 